Welcome to Supercross Live. After the checkered flag, Todd Harris alongside the GOAT, Ricky Carmichael. What a night as we wrap up round 13 here in St. Louis, a place you know oh so well. Yep, it was a lot of fun to come back here. Been a while since we had been here before the pandemic and uh, always love coming to St. Louis. These Midwest fans really turn up and have a good time. They're enthusiastic, energetic, and it was great to be back. And it was triple crown racing tonight and what a race it was, especially with the 250 East class getting back on the track. Jet Lawrence, can he be stopped? Well, well, I didn't think he could be stopped, but I got to give it up to RJ Hampshire mm -hmm. and that whole Rockstar Energy Husqvarna factory yep. racing machine. They've made some improvements to it. RJ had a podium last time they raced back in Indianapolis, but uh, to come out here, he was fast all day. He got his first ever fastest qualifying time qualifying practice, so that was great. Like, man, he's going to do it. Then he comes out firing in the first mo or first race and falls down. It's kind of been what he's been right. doing all season, but. Nevertheless, marches back to seven, second, puts himself in a great position uh, for the second race. Boom. And then he comes out there. Jet has some issues at third round yeah. or that third, third race, race. And then, man, just at the right place, the right time. But he had the speed to get the job done. And it was really fun to watch. So congratulations to RJ Hampshire. And you know what? Not a bad day for Jet Lawrence no. either. He went from 11-point lead over Cameron McAdoo to, what, like 34-point lead now. So he's uh, – He's clear sailing for the most part. He does need a new pair of trousers because he burned yeah. the hole right in the back <laughs> of that one. But he went from dead last and worked himself all the way into a podium position. That's amazing. Yeah, very, very. I mean, especially with how brutal this track was. It got beat down. There was a lot of rut. Still had good traction, but uh, he had some moments there. But I think there was a point in time in that last race where he probably was like, man, I just need to look at big right. picture. Let me just ride this thing on. Cameron McAdoo's out. I'm going to have some serious points gain here. And they only have four races left. I'm seeing the series. So I think they have like two or three races left. And uh, it's all but over for those guys. All right, let's turn our attention to the 450 class. Of course, Triple Crown Racing tonight. Eli Tomac has been so good in Triple Crown Racing. But I've got to wonder if tonight he came in and said, like you say, protect the asset, big picture, this thing. Well, I think he did after we heard his uh, post-race interview that he was fighting with front-end grip, which is crazy because it seemed like we've always talked and a lot of riders talk of how much traction there is on this track. So clearly he didn't say that. I'm glad that yeah. uh, he told us that was the issue because he certainly wasn't the Eli Tomac that we'd seen the last five races. So, um, But Marvin Muscan, yes. I got to tell you, we saw how good he's been doing the last three or four rounds. You can see that confidence building. He's been on the podium. He's been on the, of all the eight triple crowns that he's done before this race, mm -hmm. he's been on the podium four times. He got it uh, in the bag and won his first overall triple crown here tonight and his first win of the season. So a uh, fantastic ride. Uh, and and a, quite a good comeback mm -hmm. for Marvin Muskan and that Red Bull KTM over the season. They started out, they, it was pretty crummy beginning of the season, and uh, he even alluded to that in his interview. So uh, great job by Marvin Muskan. Great to see Chase Sexton on the yes. podium. He's taken some tough tough licks, but, uh, you know, the, the quest to be the – Fourth winning a Supercross right. racer still lives on for Eli Tomac, but never. I, I love watching these yes. guys race. History in the making. Chad Reed was here, and he gets another week holding onto that spot <laughs> with Eli Tomac. <laughs> so now we turn our attention to Atlanta next week. want to remind you, different time, 3 o'clock on NBC. You'll yes. be there with Lee Diffie. It's a whole different track, Atlanta Motor Speedway. Oh, well, the, if it's anything like it was last week, I mean, that footprint is very, very long. The track was really, really, really fast. We're going to be racing during the day. If Mother Nature works out, it Probably will be hot, mm -hmm. dry, fast, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot different than what these guys have been racing all year long. So it's going to be ready, and then we get to watch the showdown. Of course, that is always fun for the 250 East class. East-West showdown. Once again, congratulations here in St. Louis. R.J. Hampshire gets it done in 250 East class. And in the 450 class, it's Marvin Muscan again. Next week on NBC, 3 o'clock Eastern, Ricky Carmichael, Lee Diffie. It'll be round 14 from the Atlanta Motor Speedway. But for now, for the GOAT, Ricky Carmichael, I'm Todd Harris saying good night from St. Louis.